The name of the guest in this episode has been changed and the face blurred because of the sensitive nature of the subject matter. With that being said, the facts are true and accurate. So please comment. Well, hold up. I got something to say. Could you please tell me your name? Jocelyn. Why did you come here to, today, Jocelyn? Because uh, I have something to say. Hmm. How fitting. You're on the right show for that. Right. <laughs> hey, um, can I ask you what profession you're in? Substance abuse and criminal justice. How long have you been doing that? 15 years. You like your job? I love my job. Why did you get into that profession? Um, cause my ex-husband is an addict and, um, I tried to help him and it didn't work. So I wanted to help others. Okay. That's great. Great, great reasons behind it. Um, there's been, um, a couple of different situations. Although you like your job, there's always room for improvement, no matter what we're in. Right. In this field that you're in, um, what obstacles have you come across that you feel as though should be some correction made? Um, I think the biggest ob obstacle is um, the lack of support um, from companies who claim that the clients are vulnerable adults, but aren't looking at, you know, the staff and the counselors, their role, and um, how they could be manipulated. Vulnerable adult, how would you define that term? First define it in the industry term, and then define it what you believe that term should mean. Um, a vulnerable adult, the, Industry definition would be someone who is, um, you know, vulnerable to being um, maltreated, being neglected, or having financial exploitation done to them. And I see it as, um, you know, someone that is just being taken advantage of, okay. more or less. Would you say... In the industry that you're in, you see people misusing the term vulnerable adult. I do. I see it a lot. Can you explain? Um, I think uh, a situation that happened to me is I was a case manager at a halfway house. And um, I, you know, I had millions of male clients and I was the only female there and um, they would be just getting out of prison and, you know, sometimes coming in and trying to say nasty things to me, you know, that they wanted sex or I was this or that. And, um, you know, you're kind of looked at, since I was the only female there, um, but you're kind of looked at like what, like a piece of meat, but, um, you know, and that, that wasn't my role. You know, my role was there to, to help them, um, to find housing for when they left there, to help them find jobs, to help them reconnect with family and they, and things like that. But, um, you know, a lot of them would try to manipulate the situation and, you know, want me to forge documents or let them go out on um, passes when they shouldn't, um, things like that. <clears throat> um, but in one instance, um, I one of the residents absconded from the halfway house and that evening had called me to come and get him. And being the nice person that I am, I did. and. Um, you know, I took him back to my house and we talked and, um, you know, had sexual interactions and then he, um, I wanted to bring him back to his house, which is over in North Minneapolis. And we got over there and he was mad cause he didn't want to leave my house. And so he broke my key in the car. He 
punched me in the face. He, you know, demanded, he knew I had like $500 of cash. He demanded that, you know, we use that so that he could sell drugs to make more money from it and tried to manipulate me that way um, because he was probably going to use that, um, the drugs anyway. And then um, he ended up getting caught and going to jail. And then um, because he was mad at me, he told me on the phone, well, since you fucked up my life, I'm going to fuck up yours. And he called my job and told them about our interaction. And so my boss um, called me and I was honest and said that this had happened. And so I was let go from the company and it was also reported to the police. Um, after it was reported to the police, um, the city of Eden Prairie took it on because that's where the incident occurred. And they said it is no case. They're two consenting adults. They're not going to take it. But the investigator um, didn't like my side of the story. And so the state of Minnesota, Hennepin County, picked it up. And um, I was charged with fifth degree sexual misconduct with having to, um, if convicted, register as a sexual um, offender for a lifetime. And so I had to get a lawyer and um, fight this charge. And, um, you know, the prosecutor just kept pushing it. He wouldn't um, give in at all. Um, until finally my lawyer said that she would take it to the, all the way up to the Court of Appeals. And so then finally the charge was dismissed. Um, but I guess what I want to say is that, you know, not only um, that it doesn't matter, you know, your skin color or your race or whatever, that... Um, I feel like I was the victim here, and um, but I never really got to tell my story or my side of it because I was um, a person that was in a position of power. Uh, I was looked at as the bad guy, and um, you know I'm just a white girl from a small town, and I never thought I would be charged with a felony, and my white privilege didn't even help. Um, lower the charge because I wasn't going to accept anything less and um, I just want to you know say that this happens more often than not and it's something that needs to be talked about when you say it happens more often than not um, would you say that fem males clients mm -hmm. and female counselors or male counselors and female clients what's going on more would you the, the are you seeing the more uh, more female interactions with male clients yeah I believe um, it's more female staff with male clients um, and partly I think that's just because females are easier <laughs> maybe to be manipulated than males okay. or it's not you know, um, a lot of the counselors are white males in the field, and so maybe it's just not being brought to the ju judicial system um, that way. But um, I do know what happened uh, one other time um, at a treatment facility uh, where a woman was having relations with a client and she did also lose her job and was on probation for like five years. What can we, what would you tell the state MDHS, Minnesota Department of Health Services, I think, what would you tell them, what could they do to correct this? Is there anything that could be done to see the, the to sort of correct what's going on because you're not going to be the first or the last or the, right. it's going to be more people finding themselves in these situations. And, um, um, what could they do? Um, maybe make, you know, change the definition of what a vulnerable adult is in their, um, 
in their minds or, um, you know, look at each situation case by case and, um, you know, be willing to hear both sides just because a person is in a position of power doesn't mean necessarily that they're the ones in the wrong um, because um, they don't know this, how it led up to that. Um, so I think hearing both sides of the story and not just assuming, you know, that the counselor or staff or whatever is the one that's in the wrong all the time. And now just to back up just for one moment, like the interactions you have, the interactions have been mostly black males. Yes. Is that a preference that you, you prefer black males? I do. Yes. Um, did that lead you to the line of work that you were in knowing that they're more predominantly in the system or did you just, like you said, initially, how, how did it? Um, I think partially it did. I just feel like I am a very empathetic person and working in the field, I also feel that um, I'm taken advantage of because of that. Um, you know, a lot of the clients or people that I've had interactions with, just because I'm being nice to them, they think, you know, she must like me or something like, you know, but that's just the kind of person I am. Um, and so then they took my niceness for granted and, you know, used it against me. Um, and, you know, I know what I did probably wasn't right, but I, I feel that um, just the stories, you know, my story needed to get out there because what led up to that decision was more so on, you know, the client's um, on, you know, what the client did and how he manipulated me. One final question, just to make this so people understand. At the time, what was your position? Were you working for these places or were you just trying to learn the business? The first one I was working for. Um, the second one, I was an intern. Um, and, you know, I had told my supervisor that this client's really manipulative. Can I switch with someone who was actually you know, a licensed staff at the time, but that never happened. Um, both, there was like three other staff that had agreed and said that, you know, he's just very manipulative. Um, even his counselor had, that I worked with said the same thing, that he's um, one of the most manipulative clients he's ever had. And so I think, you know, just that history of it shows um, what kind of person he is and that the company I worked for never should have put an intern with someone who was, um, you know, an intern who's still learning with someone who was so, um, you know, deceitful and manipulative because I tried to reach out for help and, you know, switch with somebody else, switch clients. What happened to him? He's still, I think in the program. Mm -hmm. Minnesota Knights at his, at his finest. All right, we're going to go to break and we'll be right back. Yes, I'm SF Moe, prison lawyer with my man. Ron B in the middle. We got a special guest today. We heard her talk a little bit, but I'm gonna let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Jocelyn. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You hit us with a lot of stuff, new stuff, stuff that we, we, this is an inside conversation. Um, we, have her, we have her face blurred because of the sensitivity of the conversation. Um, but it doesn't negate the fact that all this is true and real. Um, what I was just talking about off camera was the fact that I was in the, I was in the uh, conversation with the DOC about ISR. Everybody's complaining about ISR because everybody's been on ISR. ISR is fucked up. We know that. Shouldn't be cussing. I'm sorry about that. And um, 
And when the deal, the, the agents, when they had their final closing thing, things, they was like, because they, they had several different sessions they were going to do. They were like, well, maybe the next session wouldn't have so many people that that don't like the pro program or other. It's like you don't want to even you don't want to do you want to be told the truth. You want everybody to say, yes, it's working. Yes, it's 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 it makes sense. And it doesn't make sense. And this whole thing with this utilization of this vulnerable adult victim, victim victimizations of people, mm -hmm. I just think like it 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 doesn't work out at all because at the end of the day, you end up if it's a duality, if it's two people that that's involved, um, and you're trying to um, pick the most the person who's the non-worthy victim, you usually get it wrong. You know. I agree. Yeah. You know, so I mean, that's what I have. That's what I have to say about that. So you were saying um, about the, you said it was two incidents that occurred. Correct. Um, one was at a halfway house, and one was at a treatment center. A treatment center. Both individuals, um, both of them it were sexual encounters. Mm -hmm. Both of them end up turning into sexual encounters. Yeah. Um, were you weren't you were never you feel like you were manipulated? I do. How was how's that? Tell me. Um well in the one instance I simply was just being nice, um, you know, I know that the client had absconded from the halfway house and was walking around downtown. And so I just thought, well, I'll at least pick him up so he has a place, to, you know, to stay tonight that's warm um, and just trying to do something nice. But it ended up, you know, where, yeah, I became his victim. Um, and, you know, I still, the crazy part was his he had like four other previous charges because I saw what he was in prison for of um, domestic assault by strangulation and things like that. So it could have gone way worse than it did. Right. You know, he um, did leave me stranded in North Minneapolis and, you know, he hit, said he hit you also. Yeah. He punched me in the face and while I was driving and. But, um, you, but, but at some point I could relate with her on the manipulation part. Because, like, I currently work at a halfway house right now. And just recently, twice, just recently, a guy manipulated me. And to, like, because, like, when I start my shift, he's out on pass. But he's supposed to be back by the time I start my shift. And I have this guy's phone number in my phone. I'm, I'm friends with the guy. You know, I know the guy and I talk to the guy, you know, try to mentor him and stuff like that. But the first incident, he calls me on my phone saying, I'm, I'm on my way, I'm on my way back, I'm on my way back, man. I'll be back there in a minute, man. I'm, I'm running late, da 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 And he ends up not coming back before my shift. And I had to call in a warrant. Like, what am I to do? Like, I'm, I'm giving you more time than I'm supposed to, more leeway to get back. And you telling me that you're gonna be back and you're not back. And then the second time he really got me good. He got me so good. Like he he asked, he, he told me he called me one hour and said I'll be there. I'm on my way. Call me an hour later, I'll be there. Call me an hour later, say, man, listen, my car not working. I spent six hundred dollars on my car today. Can you send me an Uber? I sent him an Uber and he still don't come. At that point, it's like four hours later, and I call in a warrant, and the warrant guy gets mad at me because I didn't call the warrant in within two hours. Because he's saying that guy could be out there hurting somebody right now, and you post a call. But I was in contact with the guy, so I'm thinking, like, I got a little leeway here. I don't have to call in a warrant. This guy, I could talk him in, I could talk him in, but I couldn't talk him in. He, he manipulated me twice, so I get the manipulation. Manip 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 the manipulation that you're talking about, right. I get it. Well, I wanted to say is like when you like this guy being when he absconded or he was absconded means he took off, right? He takes off from wherever he's at, treatment center, halfway house, mm -hmm. where under supervision. When he absconded, he calls you on the phone. You guys had already been talking prior because he had your you had, he had your personal number. Is that true? Yes. Um, he. Um, slid me his number one time when um, we were meeting, but, um, and then um, 
I had called him, I think called him uh, from my phone one time when I was leaving um, to say something. And so he got my number, but um, I just wanted to say in both instances too, um, the clients, the reason why they left or did what they did, I believe is because um, their UAs were going to come back dirty, which meant that it would have to be reported and they would have, um, the one, go back to prison. yeah, go back to prison. And so, um, you know, they wanted to hurt me so that they didn't have to go back to prison. And, um, well, I, I just feel like during that, during that time, like, I understand like the miscues of being nice and people yes. thinking that the niceness is she's eating me up. Right. We heard that before. She's mm -hmm. going, she's going to go. I got her. We've heard, I heard that in prison. I'm in prison. And I see individuals trying to J down. The reason I the reason I come into this conversation so hard is because I, I, from my side, the client position, I've seen individuals trying to holler at guards to try to get them out of pocket because they know if they get them out of pocket, they'll either get leniency with the system, you know, because the system, you know, if they come out as the victim, so they're they're willing, they're they're bringing the guards in, female guards in, to to get them in a position where they're vulnerable so they can either bring dope, gun, you know, whatever in. Yep. But at the end of the day, that female guard's going to suffer because her job's at jeopardy. Right. So, so I understand that. I understand that. I understand that manipulation. I understand that, that need, but I also understand this individual being placed in a cell trying to use everything he has to, to get what he needs, whether that be sex because remember that sex is removed from them. Mm -hmm. Dope, because dope's been removed. Contact with the outside world, that's been removed from Making them. Making money. Making whatever, whatever it might be, I've mm -hmm. seen that. But in this situation with this guy, you said you guys had, you, the only time you guys talk to each other or when you, is when he slipped you the number. Wasn't that a violation? Shouldn't you have reported him then when he slipped I, you the number? And that's what I want to elaborate on a little bit. Like, but let's, let's, the let's, way you said it, the way you said it, you said he slid me. He slid, number. yeah, sis. Elaborate on that a little bit. Like, how did he, like, slide you his number? Why did you say it like that? Well, um, like, I sat at a desk, and um, they, you know, he would sit on the other side of the clients I was with, mm -hmm. and we talk about goals and yeah. set for them. And so he had just folded up his number on a piece of paper, and so no one was, look, you know, looking. Just what made him feel comfortable that he could do that? I probably because everybody just thought I was nice and helpful mm -hmm. because I went out of my way for some of these guys and took them in my personal car to go look at apartments mm -hmm. and stuff and not the other case managers didn't do that. Now, did anything occur prior to him? Is he the first guy? Just, but Because what usually happens <coughs> in the situations I've been in, they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, go go for her. She's she sweet. Go, yeah, she's she, sweet. Yeah, yeah. It, it becomes sweet. becomes like a conversation like, yeah, you want her, you want to go, you know, even, even the fact that you give a ride is a plus because most case managers are making them get on the bus, right? right? Most case managers are telling right. them, go find Uber, walk, yep, yep. call up a family member. Yep, yep, yep. And it's set, up, it's set up for a reason. I understand being nice because I've been in a situation where I would want somebody to help me. So you're not wrong for it happening, but, but I'm sure that your name, Jocelyn, got around like, oh, she's sweet. Right, yeah. She, mm -hmm. she's this wasn't the, the first time. Yeah, yeah. This exactly. was well, not, not the first time you gave a ride, but the first time someone tried to interact with you sexually. Right. Was this the first time with this guy? Um, They would make more, more so just comments. comments. Yeah. Like, you know. like, like, oh, she's so sexy. I love to be, do you have a man? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stuff like that. Lots of, you have a man. Why don't you have a man? You're beautiful. This and that. Yeah. You're so yeah. thick. Look at that. Yeah. Ass, yeah. This, all that. Yeah. I know the first thing I looked at, like, 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 like when I was in correctional situations, like I looked for the ring first. If I don't see a ring, then I might would try something. But I mean, now, nowadays, you probably have, have a person that ring on, you probably shoot at it. No, you probably shoot yeah, it. No, 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 I no. Mean, I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. since you, since you know, interacting with yeah. females who are married, mm -hmm. who seem to be more promiscuous mm -hmm. than females who aren't married. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But my deal is, my deal is, like I said, I'm going back to, you know. So, the Jocelyn Sweet, mm -hmm. yeah, jo you know, holler, mm -hmm. holler. Mm -hmm. you, you get a she ride. Nice. She's gonna give you a ride. She'll give you a ride. She's she gonna, she might, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've already, I, 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 when, when they, when they used to, when they used to say those slick ass comments to you, to you, do you ever, did you ever check them on it? Like, motherfuckers say, oh, you, you did, did you like, hey, man, that's inappropriate. We got boundaries. 
I did a couple times and then I just would kind of laugh it off. Um, but then there, you know, the older gentlemen inside the house, they, um, they would check them like, come on guys, you know, we need to be polite. Can't do that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. So, when you say older, you mean the fifties, forties, fifties, sixty year old 50, men. 60, yeah. 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 They would do all that. So, um, yeah, I mean, that was helpful. Right. So some of them slowed it down a little, but, um, you know, it was always there. Mm -hmm. It continued, mm -hmm. continued on. Um, so my, my deal is like, I still go back to this this guy calling you on the phone, you reading his background, BCA report, whatever, knowing that he has a history of all these other things. I know you want to be nice. Is there not, was there not a physical attraction that made you say more than just wanting to help him out? Which is something that other, because you, I'm reading this BCA, this dude, this dude's a, 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 a mugger. He's, he's a, he's, he sticks up drug, drug dealers. But I'm looking at that. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not even messing with Buddy. I'm pushing them on. But you felt in your heart, you had such a big compassionate heart mm -hmm. that you felt as though you could help this individual. Or were you kind of scared about? You know, I think both. I felt um, both individuals that I ended up, you know, having this relationship thing with um, were single dads that have custody of their child. And because I'm a single mom, I think that pulled on my heartstrings oh, a little bit more. Okay. Um, and so okay. that, that was the draw too. And, um, yeah, they, they were attractive and they came off as suave, you know, just, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, I, I, what I see, like I said, what I see a lot in this industry is, and I want to go back to the vulnerable. I think both parties are vulnerable. If you want to use the term vulnerable adults. Because you're putting someone in a situation, dealing with somebody who's accustomed to the system, utilizing the system against you. Mm -hmm. That makes you vulnerable, right? If I don't know, if I, if I believe wholeheartedly in my heart that I'm trying to help an individual. Exactly. And I'm trying to help an individual wholeheartedly. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm you. <coughs> Listen, bro. I know who you're talking about, bro. I know mm -hmm. who the guy, guy you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Listen, bro. I know. It's t I don't want you to go back to the joint. Yeah. Here's exactly. what I want to do for I'm you. I'm telling them on the phone. Yeah. I'm like, Listen, this man I ain't gonna call mm -hmm. the police. I ain't gonna call nobody. I man, know, bro. I know back. who you're talking about. Just come cool, back. Cool, cool, bro. He's really. And he's telling me he drunk. He inebriated. And he, he telling me he like he like. All right, man. I'm coming. I'm coming, Ron. I'm coming. I'll be there. You know what I'm saying? But but I'm really believing in this guy because. Of the program that me and you got going there, where we do the class and yeah. stuff like that, and he's participating in the class. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah. I can get to this guy. I can yeah. talk to this yeah. guy. A mentor. But but but, do you feel do you feel like you were Uncle Tom because you turned turned turn him in? That's why I wanted to ask you I, on the I, phone I, I, that, that, that day when you called. That's me. why I want to quit the job, and I, I I let them trick me into like being on call. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to quit the job because like I don't. Me and Pastor Jordan, we talked about this. Like, I don't have it in me to, like, call the police on people and put people back in prison. You know what I'm saying? I have to be forced into it. Like, the both times when I had to call in a warrant on this one individual, I was on the phone with another staff member, and he's coaching me through it. I'm not doing it by myself because mm -hmm. I can't do it by myself. I don't want to send nobody back to prison. I don't think prison is the answer. I don't think jail is the answer. I think some people could be talked to and, and learn from their situation and just be put on punishment. But not prison punishment. But that, but, but like what about, taking but, passes. But, punishment. but you know, with that being said, you're right. But then it's like you end up like Jocelyn, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Helping a motherfucker out. Mm -hmm. Damn, I keep cussing. Mm -hmm. I cut that shit mm -hmm. out. Um, helping a pe helping a person out, mm -hmm. and then getting the stick, right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, all this good work. All the 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 the, per, the people that we need in there in the business to help us, Jocelyn, you aren't mm -hmm. going to work there no more mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're gone. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have the people who are not going to give us rides. Mm -hmm. We'll have the people who don't get no. And care. I was giving guys rides too, like, just like you. Yeah, were. I mean, I was giving we, guys we, yeah, rides. We, like like I'll be leaving in the morning, getting ready to come home at seven o'clock in the morning, and the guy tell me that he need to go to the blood bank. It's, like 20 below zero outside and he finna ride a bike. Exactly. I'm like, yeah. so I give him a ride and say, yeah. listen, you just catch an Uber back. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like you 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 get into the humanness of the job mm -hmm. and, 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 and and you try to help people, but at the same time you get manipulated too by people that 
don't want to quit their criminal mentality and they hate criminal their criminal mm-hmm. mind. That would criminal yeah. have a criminal mindset. Like it's there. Like I said, I've, I've been in a joint. I sit around and I, I didn't participate in any of this um, because, um, you know, just trying to, you know, talk to a female to try to get her out of. Because I've seen I've seen them walking COs out of the joint because mm-hmm. they have got there was inappropriate contact no mm-hmm. matter what that means meaning that individual like in this situation with jocelyn where you when somebody slipped your their number you're supposed to write that person up mm-hmm. right and that person's mm-hmm. supposed to be disciplined mm-hmm. and when you accept that number and if they have any contact between you and that individual because remember that individual is supposed to have your mm-hmm. number mm-hmm. you're going to go down mm-hmm. for that that's how they had a system set up so the reason i brought this conversation to everybody and brought it to the table brought it to igsts brought it to the grill pit is because i believe that the system is flawed and where that when they go into those situations looking for a predator mm-hmm. when the system itself is the predator mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Yeah. it is the predator it mm-hmm. sets that it sets mm-hmm. that scenario up mm-hmm. it's like you setting that lion up with something to eat a sheep and then victim victimizing the lion for being hungry mm-hmm. when you set that scenario up i'm coming out of prison i haven't seen a female in 15 fucking years exactly I'm horny as shit. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm trying to hit anything that's out there. And mm-hmm. then you get to the halfway house, and there's one female one female there. Case one female. Real and I can't. And, and I can't. I can't get no. I can't get no passes. Yep. Right yep. now. Yep. Yep. No. Yep. All my family yep. members that start fucking with me. I really uh, need to call up. All the females I, that I messed with previously, they start. They fucking. married or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I need. But but I need right now. I need a support system. Mm-hmm. I need a place to go. Mm-hmm. Jocelyn got it. I need a ride. Jocelyn got it. I need a check. Jocelyn. Mm-hmm. So who I'm gonna down on? All day long. Yeah. Oh no! It's, it's not a criminal. It's just survival. I mean, you want to call it criminal, but it's survive. I'm trying to survive. I'm wrong. She wrong. And that's where I come in with the vulnerable adult thing, because you're vulnerable because you don't have all these things at the same time. We had this conversation all had night, an argument last night. last night. Yeah, we had a big, big argument last night because I believe that they are vulnerable adults, but at the same time, I think they're uh, manipulative adults as well. They have, I, they, they have both things going. I right. go back to the whole lion and the sheep, the cat, the cat, the cat, that scenario. And I say that it's like, it's, it's putting them in, you're putting it, you put, I'm put, I'm putting Jocelyn in a room with an individual who's a goddamn lion. Mm-hmm. And I'm expecting her to walk out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She ain't going to walk out. Mm-mm. She might walk out nine out of 10 times, maybe. If she, if she, if, you know, but. But one of keep times, coming. He, the lion he, gonna, he gonna, he gonna the keep lion coming. gonna get through. Yeah, you know you can you can turn down the numbers yeah. as many times you can yeah. try right. because and it's I not did. in it's not it's not yeah. in her 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 yeah. her 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 her, uh, her person to to write a person up. Mm-hmm. She might I'm not gonna write I'm gonna give you an opportunity. Because she's not assertive in that it's just like I'm not assertive yeah. in that in, in that matter. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like like I, I, no, I, I let so many guys get away with so much stuff. Like a guy was in he was drunk one night in a car. Outside with his girlfriend on his first day at the halfway house, and I started my shift, and I couldn't find him. I, I went, I, I went and talked to his roommate. His roommate called him on his cell phone. He pops out the car in the parking lot. My boss is watching the cameras. My boss calls me and says, "Get that guy a breathalyzer and a UA." I give him a breathalyzer. He fails. I, I try to give him a UA. He can't even pee, which leads me to believe that maybe he would have been dirty. Mm-hmm. But, but. I told him, I said, I said, listen, bro, this UA and this breathalyzer is on me. Next time it's on you. I'm not going to keep putting my job in jeopardy mm-hmm. for you. You know what I'm saying? But I, I have sympathy for him. And, and like, I understand. I understand the struggle. Like, I, I, I don't I don't want to send this dude back to prison, back to jail or nothing. So so I gave him a break. Mm-hmm. Which, what do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. Um, it's being nice. I don't know if it's so much about I'm not assertive enough. I just think it is I have a lot of empathy and I don't feel that sending them back to prison or whatever is not the is the answer because not. they're not getting any programming or the things they need inside there either. And so I try to give, you know, people the benefit of the doubt. Um, in my second instance, he you know, the client kept telling me there's no food at the house. He was drinking peanut butter water. There's no toilet paper. There's no this and that. And so I said, well, I'll come get you and take you to the food shelf. And so that's kind of how that started. Of course, I'm going out of my way. But I was leaving work in their sober house. is close by. So I just thought I'll do that quick. And um, 
That's when he went in his bag. Yeah, well, yeah, it, the, it wasn't open, that, the food shelf. And so I was like, well, I'll give you some money to get some food. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, of course accepted that. And then, um, yeah, he went, he had, he always carried this bag on him. And um, he went in there and had like a sex toy and started, you know, putting it um, between my legs. And yeah, good to, sir, good to stop. So does this, does this individual have a previous sex crime yes he's currently on probation for a sexual misconduct and, and, he, and, he carries, and, he, and you're trying to tell me he's carrying sex toys in a bag yes <sighs> and not only that he every time he has sex he got right. 30 years probation he took a plea bargain for 30 years probation rather than go to jail would not violate his probation right walking around with that sex toy yes and he's supposed to tell his probation officer every time he has sex with somebody which is, uh, I'm not to, trying to, in, 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 you know, do anything, but what, do you know what a county he's, his probation's out of? It's Dakota County. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's wild, man. It's wild, wow, wow. You heard it here, IGSDS. You know what I'm saying? So, so when he put this sex toy on your lap, what was your first response to that? I just, at first, I'm just like, what are you doing? And he, he was like... Well, trying to get you in the mood. And, um, yeah, just his slick talking and all that, It we just ended up having sexual relations <laughs> in my car. Oh, that particular, okay, yeah. that particular time. Mm-hmm. So it was never, like... Was that the food shelf run? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I it was never at, say, the halfway house or the sober house that we, you know, we did these things. Would you um, ever? No. Would you ever bring a client in to your office? Um, he tried that once. He wanted um, that the guy, not the same individual we're talking yes. about. That when he came in to talk to me about his drug use, wanted me to suck his dick while he was in my office. He said that to you. Yes. That was his actual words. Yeah. Like, he's like, like would, would, I mean, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't lead up to it. He didn't like. Try to be like. Well, this hey, was I'm after to... we had already had sex. Oh, and when yeah. you said no, he's a predator. You said no to that. I did. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, this is she, she, he's a predator. She's, she's walking she's, around with toys in his. But the video we got that part. That's that's what the pause was for. Because who does that, right? Mm-hmm. Weirdos. Mm-hmm. Like who does that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, except for a, weird, or a straight weird, a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? Would, would would actually do some some foolishness like that? But my deal was like. So after the whole inter- interaction inside the car, now you've got him in your office. Exactly. And he's propositioning you. Did he ever try to blackmail you? Um, I, I'm eventually, it does yes. get a blackmail. Pretty much. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just much, saying. Yeah. I mean, eventually it does. But yeah. I'm saying at that particular point, if we, we me and her had just did it eventually somewhere, and I'm like, man, something about like that. And she's like, oh, I'm like, fuck, what up? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, mm-hmm. man, I'm a. You know, I'm mm-hmm. telling these people, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you better do it right now because you have that, that the element. Yeah, you got that right. over there. Yeah. 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 I mean, he would threaten like, well, I have all these text messages. So Ooh. if you, um, you know, if you report a dirty way or do this or that, Ooh. then I can show. So that's, that's what I'm saying. He's he blackmailing her. Yeah. Like he's a predator. Yeah. He's bright. Well, he's, 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 he's a, he's a calculated. What, what I, what I, what I say about this, like what you, when you understand the system. This is what this was my conversation. This is the whole conversation. Because I started off earlier today, off camera, talking about my situation. Everybody out there know my situation, and it's it's why when I went back and I looked at the law, they choose the worthy victims. So everybody's big being victimized in this scenario, right? Mm-hmm. Gentlemen could be be vi- being victimized because all the scenarios. The be- that's where you get to your vulnerable adult mm-hmm. for your conversation. Mm-hmm. We got Jocelyn. She's been victimized by the system. The system is the is the person that should be on trial. That's utilizing, right. utilizing mm-hmm. and victimizing individuals. Mm-hmm. They, so they're the ones that can choo- choose the worthy victim in this scenario. In my case, they chose the they worthy victim. They are the pimps. They've always been the pimps. They are the pimps. They've always been, but they've always been able to turn it and push it back and make you feel like like you're the problem. Like problem. you're the pimp. Right. You're problematic. Yeah. 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 You're yeah. you're the you're, we, if we get rid of you, no. Like I, the reason, the reason this is not this. Everybody, this is not for sensationalism. This is not for anything. Yeah. The reason is, is we're, we're we're having this conversation because we this is not the first or the last individual who's going to be victimized by the system, right? Losing their jobs, losing their 
college education, education. Yeah. all that stuff you went to work for, mm -hmm. losing all that because you have an individual who has nothing to lose, nothing to lose, go out and say these allegations, true or false, doesn't matter, the allegations. And, and why, why did he, like, expose our relationship anyway? He got in trouble for something initially, right? Because he was, they... Some his roommate or someone at the sober house said that they had caught him um, smoking meth, mm. and so one of the peer recovery specialists went out there and brought him back to do a UA. Mm -hmm. um, and during this, he told me that he used Gatorade for the UA. Mm -hmm. So the UA did come back um, as the pH wasn't acceptable. So he knew that. If they had to test him again, it would come back positive. Dirty. So his idea was, we'll get rid of her because then she can't report it to So he, 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 he used y'all's situation. Yeah, the yeah. system. Yeah, he yeah. used the system yeah. to yeah. keep himself yeah. out of the yeah. hot you know, water like, you know, and I put you in yeah. hot water. You know, yeah, he basically because I have everything yeah. to lose. Yeah. 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 Well, he has nothing to yeah. lose. Right. That's what they don't understand. Like, like when you're dealing with people who have nothing to lose, but you got to understand too, Jocelyn, like you're dealing with people who have nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose. They're utilizing you for everything. You got to find, like, it's, in this conversation, what I hope comes out is self-worth. What I want you self -worth. to do. Self-worth. What I want you to self -worth. do. Self-worth. I'm worth more than this dude. I want to help everybody, yeah. but I don't want this dude who has nothing to lose. Exactly. To, 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 to jump on my, and, jump on, and, and jump in my in car, trouble. jump yeah. in my house. Yeah. That's all he's looking for. He's looking for a warm place to stay, some food to eat, put in his belly, and somebody check that he can take from them. What I want you to do. When you do get your job, because you're going to get your yeah, job back. of course back. you're going to get the job back. Yeah. You're going to come out yeah. from under this. But what I want you to do is think about that 13-year-old son you got. Yeah. Think about your family, your father, mm -hmm. your mother. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And put all of that ahead of whatever's going on right. at this job. My, my, deal, my, deal is, my deal has always been this. You know, like... You got you have so much to offer. Stop giving it away. You know, I understand sometimes it'd be like, you know what? But I mean, you, you you're not gonna find someone who's gonna respect you. Cause I would have never done that to you. Mm -hmm. My brother would have never done that to well, you. Well, they claim they're never gonna do no, that. No, 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 no. Because like, then thing I was, I would have never, I would have never, I would have never, I would have never. I told this guy about the first situation and what happened to me. And he's like, Oh, I would never do that. I would never say anything, you know, and then yeah, it happens again. Think, think about it is it's in character because the first thing about it is I would have never I would have never be leaning on you for you support. Gave too much information. I would have never leaned on you for support. You can always see, you can see it in an individual's characters right off the bat. Like my brother's got his own place. He's got his own car. He's got his own thing. Even when he got out of prison, he starts doing stuff for his on his own, trying to build his build up who he is. Mm -hmm. He wasn't trying to utilize anybody. And if he felt like it was that situation, he always moved himself away from that mm -hmm. one in his own. Because he didn't want anybody to call him on it. Call him on like, this is my place. Get out. And I told right. you about that. I told you. I, I, had a, I had a girlfriend when I got out to the halfway house the first time. Mm -hmm. But I seen she wasn't the person that I knew before I went to prison. And I moved, removed myself from that situation. Right. So it's just, like I, like I was saying, it's just honesty and character. But like a lot of individuals don't have that. So they can lie in your face. Like I said, I'm manipulating. I have no reason to manipulate you. You know, because I got my own. What can you give to true, me? That, what can, what can true. you give me? Mm -hmm. that's, what, can you give, what can you do for me right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you get to that level of conversation, it, it, it now, now you know I'm not going to jump. Because I understand what, how hard you work to get that position. Mm -hmm. You know, that you have a son. I care about your son. I I don't want anything to happen to you and your son. Mm -hmm. And he knew about my son. Exactly. He so has he, a thirteen. He's a dirtbag. Yeah, he's a dirtbag. Shut up, dirtbag. You want to get on the show and talk? Come talk. Come talk. <laughs> you know what we're talking about? He's a manipulator. You're a dirtbag. You're he's a douchebag. Later. Yeah. He's a predator. Mm -hmm. He don't Straight care up. about nobody but himself. There's no criminal. There's no criminality in what he's doing. It's a manipulation, and even when I was out pimping, I didn't ever manip I never ma manipulated anybody. I told them the truth. That's what. That's why they couldn't put me, put on. I'm telling you exactly what you're gonna do. So you can always, if you didn't want to do it, don't do it. If you want to do it, do it. But I'm never gonna manipulate anybody and and lie to them because I have no reason to lie. I'll tell right. you the facts. You know. Yeah, he always. I mean, even in all like the text messages, it's him saying, "Oh, you don't know what it's like because you, you know, just trying to make me feel bad." Because you live in a white privileged house. I bet he called you a Karen. No, he's called me the ops. 
that I was against so, him. So I really didn't care about his sobriety because I was the opposite. Why, why how did this conversation, would you, because you wouldn't help? Where, where's this conversation? Because he couldn't get what he wanted? Yeah, because he asked me for money several times. Oh, so he's, so he's using he you. Get what he wanted. He's trying to cash her out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all mm -hmm. he's trying to get. And I gave it to him a couple times, but then I How much was the amount? How was the amount? Did you, did you, you took the, this is not, we got to separate the two guys. Now, which guy is this? The second one? Yes. And is this the, because you said the initial I guy. I gave them both money, actually. Well, with the first guy you said, he took the 500. No, I had it in my purse because oh. I had given him 200 prior. Okay. And then he, I had another 500 that he wanted to buy meth for to try to sell. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that sounds good. So. And with the other guy, how much um, what, was he? Just 50 because I had learned from the first one. So mm -hmm. I'm like, this is it. And so then when I won't give, yeah, it was always. He was, that, he was, was trying to pressure you to give yeah. him money. Hmm. So I'm the ops and yeah, he would just sense? try to turn Go get a job. Go okay. get you a goddamn it. Go up, sit here, go, go get you a, 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 a cup, go stand on the corner. And I helped him. I was, I, there was, uh, you know, I helped him find jobs, but he wouldn't go because he claimed. He's lazy. Yeah. What's your, what's your special, what's your specialty? Is your specialty employment specialist or your housing specialist <clears throat> or your, um, substance abuse is um, your specialty. So yeah. if I hired you on, you would come in and be my, my, my substance abuse specialist. But because I've been a case manager, I have like lots of, um, resources as far as fe felony friendly housing um you know places that jobs that accept felons okay um, what know, about what about summit oic helps a lot with you know getting helping felons learn a trade so that they can get into you know work what about housing for uh sex offenders because like yeah at the halfway house at that's the halfway house that i work at right now there's a lot of sex offenders there and like they're having a lot of trouble finding depends on their levels because if you're level three, they talk about saturation. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can so even if it's housing exactly available. It yes. You they can't, can't have in. too many in yeah, one area. Because of the because of the and you have to capacity. be so many feet away from a school. So yeah. many. You know. So the housing itself, they they're limited housing in general. Yeah. But you can help with that. I mean, I can, but it, I struggled with it being there because of that, the saturation. There's just so much mm -hmm. of it. Unless they want to move, you know, outside of the cities, mm -hmm. then it, there's more housing. But if they want to be in, you know, the St. Paul, Minneapolis. So what, what yeah. place, like, were you, did you, did you deal with better, better futures? You know what better futures are? I did. I do. But no. Um, a Vivo. Yep. I used to work at a Vivo. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. um, Twin City Rise. Yes. Um... Um, I'm keep going, let me keep going on. Bad no, bad. no, I'm going through all the the halfway houses. I'm going through like the programs out there supposed to be helping people. Well, like she better future. She worked but, somewhere around here. But better futures right was set up. Here. Better futures was set up to help individuals as they come out to get mm -hmm. them jobs, mm -hmm. um, right. housing. So I would yeah make referrals to these to better places futures, to help them to better. Okay. And then like because I was very good at my job, but even my my supervisor, I know he didn't want to fire me because he couldn't even call and tell me I was terminated. He had to have his boss do it. Um, and he was kind of like, when I admitted it, he kept saying, are you sure you did? You know, because I'm just, I always tell the truth. And I think he was getting me, to, you know, trying to get me to say yeah. no. Yeah. And he's like, are you sure you really did? You know, and I didn't catch on. But um, yeah, I was getting ready to be promoted. And, um, Man, messed up. and he knew that. And so, and he, plus he was jealous anytime that I had another male in my office, mm. he would sit outside mm. and text me on my you phone. You know how many times I've seen that? Like, like oh. guys in prison, like playing. You talking, no, 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 who are you talking about was jealous? The, the, the guy? The guy. The boss? No, no the, the guy. guy. The guy. Oh. Like, I, you know how many times you've been I, in prison and you've seen a guy claim a girl, he talks to this female guard all the time. And he gets mad when somebody else talks to her. Yes. I, I can see the situation where she... Yeah, I just... Wow, the fuck out of me. Like, this, what, this don't make... That, okay, so he... So he, so y'all were in a relationship then? It was kind of one, yeah. Mm-hmm. But he... He thought so more in his head. Um, but... And that's, you know, one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. um, he told on me because I didn't want it. You know, I knew I shouldn't be doing this. And so... I tried to step back and say hey, we can't do this, and then that's when it all it blew up. Yeah, yeah, it blew up. Um, yeah, this is this is this is super super crazy. Um, um, what back to the conversation we're having? What do you think needs to change, if anything, to correct what's going on to keep individuals from being in this position that you're in currently? Um, Assertiveness. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, 
being more assertive and not trying to give everybody, you know, the benefit of the doubt, like um, reporting things right away that I see that are, you know, are negative. Um, if I gave you your, my number right now, you're my, my coach, would you report me? Yes. If I came into your office and I said, you look good today, you got a man, would you report me? Probably not. That's I would have a conversation with you That's saying, though, um, you know, I'm here as your counselor. This is a therapeutic relationship, and that's it. If you, if I ask you for a ride to, to take me to the workforce because it's it's cold outside, would you give me a ride? No. Not if today. I if I if I said um, I need to borrow a couple of bucks, I'm I'm low. Would you give me some money? No. Would um would I if I said let me follow you on Instagram. Let me get your IG. No. Are you jaded when it comes to dealing with African-American males, specifically because the two individuals you spoke about are African-American? Um, no, I don't think I'm jaded. I, um, because I could see, again, um, these weren't the first men that tried to approach me in some kind of way. You know, there were white men that did it too in both instances that I... A white man had tried you? Yeah, that I was able to turn down. Okay. But it was just something about these two in particular. I think it has to do with this being... Let, let me ask you a question about the white men <clears throat> that approached you. Because, like, we, we live in Minnesota right now. And I know some white guys in Minnesota that can use the N-word around me and I won't feel offended. Are these those type of white men? Or are they, like, white guys, white guys? Like, suburban white guys? Um, so, yeah. So, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? You understand, like, well, I was going to try to clarify the question. The question is more so, are they white guys who have been urbanized? Are they urban, urbanized, urbanized white guys, guys yeah, or, or are they, they just country, country, white country guys. bunch walking white yeah. guys? You know, I think it was both. Both? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I, I, you know, how, how prevalent do you think this is in the industry where individuals are having sex or... Or or that that dynamic exists. I'm sure it's a because you got male and a female, so it's always going to exist. But they're actually going through with it. Or uh, I'm gonna let you ask that question. Answer that question first. Um, I do think it happens a lot. I do know of another instance where it happened to a female um, who was a counselor in a treatment center, and she got terminated and was given probation. Um, but in school, we are taught time and time again in ethics and boundaries to make sure that, you know, because they see this all the time. And so, you know, they talk about it a lot that to make sure that it's a therapeutic relationship. And if you start to have feelings, cause it's normal, you know, to ask for a transfer to, you know, get that client transfer. But you said that, that didn't happen. Yes. 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 How does school, how does school, not match school doesn't match up with real life situations right yes good that, i did ask yeah you did ask and you were you refused and, more and, than one time and yeah. i still wasn't given how, how long ago were you at twin city rise did you work there i didn't work there you i just, just was a yeah, referral yep to them was they were people that i you know talked to a lot because of my clientele okay and um and uh okay all right i mean it's just to me I, you know, I have a hard problem, a hard time with the whole scenario of everything because I think in your industry, in general, it's it's predominantly females. Mm -hmm. Case because that's all I used to see. I've rarely seen a, a male yeah, unless yeah, he was barely, a manager. Unless he was a manager, he's already worked himself up through the field. Mm -hmm. I rarely see males like even in the joint. You know, when you went and see your seen your case manager nine times out of ten, she was a female mm -hmm. right which wasn't a male that's the only mm -hmm. time you really saw at this them. halfway house there was just two of us and one was a male and one and then me um but a lot of them right when they came in would be like well i want the female case manager of course well you could we, uh, when i was in halfway you house you could choose like you, yeah, you, could, you choose could never choose it. you just got you just got assigned got well assigned. and that that's what happened it was just who had the opening and so um, of course they want the female right so a lot of them would try to come and talk to me anyway even though you know, my partner was his. I would choose. Didn't, did, did, didn't, they, didn't they frown upon <laughs> that? Right? You can't, you couldn't, if I, we both were case managers, my client couldn't come talk to you. 
No, yes, normally it was frowned yeah, upon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you, you but they yeah, were trying like, to sneak and talk like, to me. That's like spitting staff. It's something more than than that. Like, I can okay, like, say if, say if, say if, say if Jocelyn was an uh, employment specialist, mm -hmm. And I was, a, I was, and my client wanted to go talk to her, but I didn't think he was ready to talk to her. Mm -hmm. I could okay him talking to her, but there's boundaries, right? You just can't walk into her office and talk to no. her, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so. Well, and the difference, I, you know, was he came from being, you know, a probation officer, so he was very strict, but, and yeah, it but, was more punitive. Where I come from, you know, let let's get to the bottom of this, the therapy part. Right. And so that's where our halfway house was trying to go. So why I got hired was because my supervisor wants it to be more, less punitive and more, more. let's work on this stuff. So, you know, like I ran groups um, talking about adverse, you know, childhood experiences and how they, these could lead up to, you know, going into prison or being in special ed, which is the prison pipeline then, yeah. things like that. Um, you should watch one of our previous um, podcasts where we talk about that. The prison uh, with, with Chantel. Watch all of them. Yep. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's me talking. But um, yeah, but you were just talking about running groups. But you know, mm -hmm. even with the groups, I think you're saying you were having problems with individuals inside the groups as you would go into your groups. Yeah, just making make, comments. Just making comments, uh, lewd comments mm -hmm. to you. Um, um, and yeah. I was the only staff at the place. Um, like the only female in the room with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they kind of set me up that way, I feel like, too, the job. Mm -hmm. They should have had one of the, you Meals. know, the door, just yeah, yeah, the yeah. everyday staff yeah, yeah, just, yeah. sit in there with me. So, mm -hmm. he, you know, they wouldn't feel but luckily so it was the older men that was were like, okay, you guys need to listen to her and yeah. quit talking like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's be respectful. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. What, um, um, as we break to, if we, as we end um, this conversation, which I think was a great, phenomenal conversation, um, what do you what do you think individuals should know that they don't know? Because you because what we didn't talk about is a criminal charge that they tried to weigh against you. Have you fought? Have you have, have you have, 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 have you having a fight against that to get right. that from being waged? You know, basically killing your your whole career mm -hmm. and how you how that thing played out. Um, and that's a that's a that's a device that people don't really talk about. Right. You know that. Yeah, I, they charged me with a felony fifth degree criminal misconduct um and so i had to get a lawyer and and fight it and you know the prosecutor wasn't about to let it go um was it was it because you wouldn't you, you wanted wanted you to tell on somebody because usually the prosecutors they're adamant because the family's behind it it's it's, it's a serious crime but this it seems like they. No, I really in. think he wanted to make a point. Make a make, of, make you make, make you make you yeah. make yeah. you an example. Make yeah. you an example. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So. That's you rarely find that mm -hmm. in courts. You know when uh, Caucasian females are in there, they're usually the victim, mm -hmm. right? And he was a new prosecutor. So oh, he so wanted he wanted to, to, he wanted to make his teeth. Oh, he was trying, he was to, trying, to, he was trying yeah. to grind his teeth on her. He was yeah. Trying, yeah, he was trying yeah. to make a name for himself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but luckily and my lawyer was making an example enough. out of you at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. which I, which I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm sure people are going to watch this and take and get in the comment box, comment on this. You know, if you got anything to say, but I'm sure people going to walk away with this and be like, "Boo hoo, you, boo hoo, what are you crying for? What are you crying about? You right. know, you know, this is the first time. Like, what do you, you know, talk to those people? Like, you know." You're, you initially start off saying that this is not about black or white or anything like this. This is about what's going on. How mm -hmm. the system How it's the got system a foot is. on everybody's neck. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is not just, you know, we talked initially, you know, talked about white privilege, but it's it's not about white privilege, black privilege. It's not about any of those privileges. It's about this systematic removal or need to... Um, victimize individuals mm -hmm. because they can't get it right. Right. Mm -hmm. If anything, mm -hmm. I would have thought that being white would have helped in my case mm -hmm. and it didn't. And so, 
you know. Could you say that again? Say that to the camera there. Because that, that's I, wild. I said in, yeah, in this situation, I would have thought my white privilege would have worked in my favor, but mm -hmm. it didn't. You said walk. walk you mentioned. I mean, when it, you said walking out, walking into the courtroom, there was a couple of black people walking out. And they were saying, "You're going to get off." Did yeah, they're they saying remember? she's white. She'll get off. And <laughs> me and my dad are thinking, "Yeah, all right." Nah, you no, know, it's going to because they're yeah. going hard at us. Yeah, they're going super hard. But, so we just all. All I'm trying to get people to understand is that. What we what we what we try to bring or the conversation we're trying to have is like this is not and, and you know SFMO I get to talk and then people are like oh SFMO what do you feel you feel this way about white folks it's like I don't feel like about that about any anybody I have all types of friends what I'm saying this is systematic and if we don't get together come community community looks different across the across the page but if we don't become community and start talking about these things that's going on and let them continue getting rid of Jocelyn's. And it could, we're going to continue with a system that does not work. Mm -hmm. be, be, before we end, yes, sir. I want to ask you one question, one final question. What's the conversation with you and your parents about what happened, and do they still bring it up, or does it like come up or anything when y'all go to family events? <clears throat> um, it took me months and months to tell my parents. I didn't want to tell them that I was fired for this. Um, I told my sister first and we tried to think of every way, but um, in order to get a good lawyer, I needed uh, a good sum of money. And so it ended up that we had to, to you know, tell Talk my dad. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he, he, I mean, I, I kind of saw a side of him that I hadn't seen before. Which was? Because, you know, he agreed to pay um, the money for the lawyer and, um, but normally he would hold everything like above, you know, yeah. above my head all the time, like make me feel guilty for mm -hmm. paying for college or doing this and that. But he had said, well, because I was, you know, just crying and like, I can't believe this is happening to me. And then, you know, he said, well, how do you think I feel, you know, having my baby daughter, you know, going through this and I can't really do anything to help besides, mm -hmm. you know, just paying this money and hoping mm -hmm. our lawyer can, you know, so seeing that soft side of him um, was nice. But yes, no, he reminds me time and time again, um, he'll never put up any more money. So if this happens again, you know, it's mm -hmm. all on me. And um, so that uh, the second incident I can't share with my parents. Is your parents, being that you have a history of dating African American males, were they ever against that starting off? Yeah. They were at the beginning until they got to know um, my ex husband. And, um, you know, they liked him. He was, he's a hard worker. He was, a, a, he's a good dad. Mm -hmm. But when he would relapse, it was like he was a binge. Um, user of crack. Oh, just and, here for a while and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, so he would leave him. the house yeah. and, but like my dad did a lot for him. He paid $7,000 to get him out of jail. He gave him a car that then my ex-husband crashed. Um, he, like, he was there for us too, you know, um, because my dad agreed. He was a hard worker and he was good to Caden. Um, but now, they're a little I feel that my parents are a little more jaded when it comes to African American men. Why is that? Because they too were, you know, giving and trying to help out, and and they were done wrong. Well, if so it was your a, experience with but, but African American men, but it, it became their experience. But, 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 but that doesn't because matter because if it was all yeah. Caucasian individuals that she came across, would they now be a dish again? It's like you know, you got you got bad apples in a bunch, and that's what I keep telling. Yeah, you. I said like, this could have been a white guy. Yeah, that, you it could have been a whole mm -hmm. series right. of them mm -hmm. that that could could have done this, mm -hmm. and it could have happened. It's just like with the situation with the, to me, where I look at the situation where it starts from, you have individuals who are desperate looking for a place to stay, food to eat, mm -hmm. all these other things. Mm -hmm. So they're willing to make these, a, like if you get with an individual, like I was going to ask you to just, just a real quick sidebar to the industry. Like, so if you were in an industry, your industry, and, and I was a black male who worked with you, mm -hmm. we both counselors, and they saw you and I together, right? We just, we're just friends. Right. Would they, would they be talk? Uh, amongst the industry, uh, the people that you work with, about you and I 
having sex together. Or if they saw you with a client, like if you gave me a ride too many times with people like whispering, like, oh, they must be doing something. Yeah. A lot of gossiping yeah, in that, in that, yeah. in that industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's crazy, man. What you got to say, Ron B? It's IGSDS, you're in the grill. <laughs> Comment box and uh, talk to us. Let us know what time it is. We all re or we only need one, 150 more subscribers. 150 and we've hit that thousand mark. You know, it's all in the grill pit, bitch. It's a wrap. I'm going to smoke. <laughs> <laughs>